Hello friends, you may recall last time we discussed about air quality standards. So, basically whether it is air quality standards or uh, uh, legislations or regulations or policies, they contribute in air quality management, in an effective air quality management. So, today we will look into air pollution legislations and regulations because they are the backbone of any kind of uh, notification acts or policies which government prescribes and which we follow and uh, we meet those uh, standards which are based on those legislations basically. So, uh, in this content you can look into this introduction part will be there, so why we need these legis legislations or regulations, what, what are their back bearing. Then timeline of air pollution legislations and regulations in context of India like which acts have been introduced. Uh, uh, up to 1960 from 1900 to 1960 you can see. Then uh, which were the acts which were uh, developed or enacted during 1961 to this 2022. So, we will see major or most important acts and notifications in this particular presentation and then we will conclude. So, when we talk about legislations and regulations basically they are the tools soft tools for air quality management. So, these components serve as foundation for national uh, you know policy framework on enforcement of air pollution uh, mitigation plans or efforts and for the re reinforcement of air quality management plans. So, legislations basically help us or enable the citizens to establish processes and methodologies or programs for monitoring or enforcement or public participation in air pollution control which could uh, like have significant impacts on improving the ambient air quality or if those legislations are related to indoor air quality then they will improve the indoor air quality. So, this is the timeline in brief you can see in 1905 Bengal Smoke Nuisance Act was enacted then in 1912 Bombay Smoke Nuisance Act was established in 1939 Motor Vehicles Act was there and Factories Act was enacted in 1948. Then in 1951 the Industrial Development and Regulation Act has been enacted. Basically we are looking into only those acts which directly or indirectly influence the air quality right. In 1952 the Inflammable Substances Act was enacted and the Mines Act was established or uh, you know passed in 1952. Then in 1962 we had the Atomic Energy Act and in 1963 Gujarat Smoke Nuisance Act was formulated. In 1981 we had uh, you know very important uh, this act which is known as Air Prevention and Control of Air Pollution Act or simply Air Act in 1981. Then in 1986 we had one uh, umbrella uh, kind of act this is known as the Environment Protection Act ok EPA. In 1995 then afterwards we had National Environment Tribunal Act. Okay, NETA. In 1997, we had National Environment Appellate Authority NEA Act, and 2000 is uh, you know related to the ozone depleting substances regulation and control rules. So in 2010, then we had National Green Tribunal Act, and in 2021, we had Commission for Air Quality Management in National Capital Region and Adjoining Areas Act 2021. So, last year uh, we had basically and this year you know uh, just uh, a few days before we had this draft notification for e-vehicles in NCR that is national capital region. So, if we uh, look into one by one of these acts so that we can know in what uh, uh, you know background these acts were enacted and what was their scope or how they really helped us to improve the air quality. So, if we come to the first act which was Bengal smoke nuisance act in 1905. So, at that time uh, you know uh, it was enacted to curtail the uh, smokes from uh, furnaces and other kind of burning activities in and around Kolkata ok. So, this Bengal smoke nuisance act 1905 was introduced basically to protect the this Victoria memorial and other issues were also there. So, the West Bengal Pollution Control Board and Victoria Memorial Hall, Kolkata arranged for a uh, you know ceremonious meeting to mark the uh, this uh, centennial of this uh, Bengal Smoke Nuisance Act 
1905 afterwards. Then this act for the abatement of nuisance arising from the smoke for furnaces or fireplaces in the towns and suburb areas of the Kolkata and Howrah and other areas of the Bengal. So, this was the kind of periphery or the area where it was uh, impacted. Well, then uh, uh, it was uh, very kind of stringent act in at that time because it was uh, stated in this particular act that if smoke is emitted from any furnace in greater density or at a lower altitude or uh, for a longer time period then what is permitted by the rules made under this particular act the owner of the furnace shall on conviction be punished for the first offence with fine which may extend up to 2000 rupees. So, 2000 rupees at that time was very big amount and for a second or subsequent offence with fine which could be even 5000. And but later on uh, you know in 2018 uh, recently, so this act was repeat, repealed because it was no more uh, relevant due to this enforcement of uh, air prevention and control of air pollution 1981 act. So, it was repealed basically. In 1912, we had this uh, Bombay Smoke Nuisance Act. So, it was on the line of uh, Bengal uh, Smoke Nuisance Act and uh, here this uh, fine amount was uh, little bit less in comparison to that amount. So, 250 and 500 were kept in this particular uh, act and this was applicable uh, you know in the greater Bombay area basically or uh, extension in other areas of the Maharashtra. So, this Bombay Smoke Nuisance Act was enacted in 1912 and uh, then in 1939, we had the Motor Vehicle Act. Okay. So, this was for regulating vehicular uh, pollution or emissions and according to the amendment in Motor Vehicle Acts in 1988, uh, this is uh, mentioned that any person who drives or causes or allows to be driven in any public place a motor vehicle which you know violates the standards prescribed in relation to the road safety, control of the noise and air pollution shall be punishable for the offence with a fine. So, in 1988 it was categorically mentioned. Well, uh, then in 2019 uh, we had this motor vehicles amendment bill. So, this latest uh, bill uh, basically recalls uh, vehicles if a uh, you know it has provision for recalling uh, these vehicles which are defective in nature okay, and they cause damage to the environment. So, the manufacturer either has to uh, recall those kind of vehicles, they have to refund the customer the total cost or they have to replace the defective vehicle. In 1948, uh, we had Factories Act. So, this was a national act that included the management of activities involving dust and fumes from industrial complexes. So, that way again it is related to air pollution and this is the first act of independent India indirectly focusing on air pollution, this Factories Act, act 1948. And this act was enacted for occupational safety, health and uh, you know welfare of uh, workers at the workplace. So, you can say occupational related issues it was uh, you know included. And at the chapter 3rd and sections uh, 13, 14 and 15 of this uh, particular act focus on ventilation and dust fumes and humidity related issues pertaining to the health of labor. So, <coughs> occupational related hazards included all these kind of things. So, in 1951 we had this industrial development and regulation act and this act was enacted to provide for the development and regulation of certain industries. So, again certain industries means those could contribute to the air pollution you can say and the extent was limited to the purpose of conserving any resources of national importance which could be utilized in that particular industry along with the regulation of production and industrial development. So, that way indirectly you can say it was also regulating the air pollution. The Mines Act of 1952, okay, a consideration of air pollution was again limited to the ventilation actions to be taken in respect of the dust, fire, inflammable and noxious gases including precautions against spontaneous combustion and under, underground fire and the coal dust. So, again related to occupational hazards as such you can say. In 1952, the Inflammable Substances Act 
was enacted and uh, again uh, because uh, you know it was related to air pollution through safety issues indirectly you can say. And the solitary purpose of this act was to declare certain substances to be dangerously inflammable and regulating them uh, for you know under this act, petroleum act of 1934, but indirectly it could also relate to the air pollution you can say. In 1962 afterwards we had this uh, or atomic energy act. So, this act was basically addressing only the health impact and safety from the radioactive substances. So, you know radioactive substances can go uh, from one place to another and it is hazardous uh, and very toxic you can you know then about that. So, these substances with the sole purpose of control over atomic energy and radioactive substances this act was focusing on especially. Then in 1963 Gujarat smoke nuisance act was enacted. So, this act aimed at the abatement of nuisance arising due to the smoke which was uh, coming out of furnaces in the city of Ahmedabad and in the adjacent area of that uh, Gujarat state. And how to uh, you know uh, identify whether this is nuisance or not. So, this uh, you know Ringelmann chart uh, was used as a device for determining whether emissions of the smoke are within the limits of the standards or they are violating. And you can see like this kind of chart was used uh, which was prepared by professor Ringelmann. He devised a visual assessment method. So, like uh, light gray then uh, darker then black those kind of color schemes were there and this used to be uh, you know placed into eyesight at a particular distance and uh, it used to be matched with the color of the smoke. So, one could uh, easily judge whether how much intensity of the pollution is there. So, basically there were you know 5 grading 0 to 5 0 is the white, 5 is the black and with, with in between there were different shades of the gray you can say. Well, then we had this very very important act uh, you know this was known especially air prevention and control of air pollution act or simply air act in 1981 this was enacted. So, it was completely exclusively was focused on air pollution ok. And uh, you know this is the first uh, uh, act which was formulated with the sole purpose as I said to uh, prevent and control and uh, uh, you know having the abatement of air pollution to improve the air quality. In 1987 it was amended basically giving the central and state pollution control boards the authority to deal with sev, uh, you know severe air pollution related emergencies ok. And uh, uh, you know the air act amendment uh, this uh, you know it has mandated uh, through CPCB and uh, uh, CPCB means central pollution control board and state pollution control board the SPCBs. Uh, you know they were given these uh, rights or authority to establish national ambient air quality standards for, for criteria pollutants. You may recall those standards we have discussed. So, uh, this is the act which has you know given the authority to uh, central pollution control board and SPCBs to have the ambient air quality standards and to apply them across India and to assist the government in planning future environmental prevention and control strategies. Okay. So, these were clearly mentioned in this act. Then carrying out research to better understand environmental issues and undertake nationwide air sampling to ascertain the ambient air quality in India and identification of the related problems in those areas and to conduct air quality inspection in areas of the concern. And the state pollution control boards were allowed to set more stringent standards than what is you know prescribed by the central government uh, through CPCB those air quality standards. And the network which now you see of air quality monitoring across India is basically you know rooted in this particular act. Then in 1986 then we had this environment protection act ok. This is an umbrella act which uh, you know covers uh, many rules and laws and this notification uh, you know on uh, lead free petrol and catalytic converters for vehicles in metropolitan cities ok. All these many other uh, you know acts were uh, rooted or offshoots of this, this particular environment protection act you can say. Well, national environment tribunal act uh, NETA 1995 this was established 
to uh, this act is to provide basically strict liability for damages arising out of an accident occurring while handling any hazardous substances or uh, you know uh, the establishment of uh, this particular uh, tribunal for effective and uh, you know expeditious uh, disposal of cases arising from such accidents with a view to giving relief uh, to uh, you know people uh, who are uh, you know victims of those kind of uh, accidents and the property or the environment and uh, you know uh, related uh, issues to handle legally and properly and uh, in a fast mode you can say. Well, then in 1997 we had this national environment appellate authority. Okay. So, this act was legislated to create uh, this authority to deal with complaints involving environmental clearances within the restricted areas not uh, simple areas but the restricted areas. So, this is basically an act to provide for the establishment of uh, this particular authority to hear appeals with respect to restrictions of areas in which any industries or operations or processes shall not be carried out or if they are carried out then with the uh, you know subject to certain safeguards within the uh, you know uh, guidelines of the environment protection act of 1986. So, those have to be incorporated which basically. Well, then next is the ozone depletion uh, or ozone depleting substances regulation and control rules uh, 2000. Okay. So, this act was uh, for dealing with prohibition of new investments with ozone depleting substances and regulation of import, export and sale of those products uh, you know uh, which have this ozone depleting substances right. Because as you know Montreal protocol was signed in 1987 and then some time was given to developing countries. So, in that uh, you know process this in 2000 uh, we had this particular act so that uh, this could be phased out properly. So, the ozone cell established by uh, Ministry of Environment, Forest and uh, Climate Change, this has been given the responsibility for carrying out all tasks relating to phasing out of the ozone depleting substances. Right? So, you can see this particular site is there where it can be seen and it was related to Montreal Protocol as you know. Next is National Green Tribunal Act 2010. This is very important uh, you know to hear any kind of complaint. So, this uh, tribunal was established in 2010 uh, uh, you know it has a specialized uh, judicial body basically equipped with expertise solely for the purpose of resolving environmental cases in the country. So, uh, environment related cases are uh, heard in uh, this uh, NGT. This is very important uh, judicial authority. Okay. The tribunal uh, is tasked with the providing effective and uh, expeditious remedy in cases relating to environmental protection or conservation of the forest and other natural resources and enforcement of any legal right relating to the environment. So, whatever you know activity is harming the environment one can complain to NGT and they will uh, you know uh, give the judgment after hearing all uh, parties. Well, Commission for Air Quality Management in National Capital Region and Adjoining Areas Act 2021. So, this act uh, is to provide basically the constitution of the uh, you know uh, this commission of air quality management in this NCT, okay, this national capital region and adjoining areas for better coordination, research identification and re resolution of problems which are surrounding in this uh, area related to poor air quality index or you know which are matters related to uh, whatever air quality related issues are there. So, the objective of this particular commission has been to plan and execute the program for this region uh, of NCT to prevent control and abatement of the air pollution. And it was also given uh, you know the rights to laying down the parameters for the quality of air in its various aspects. So, that in comprehensive manner air quality can be studied and uh, managed. Then it was also for laying down parameters for emissions or discharges of environmental pollutants from different sources whatever they are and their implications in terms of air quality in this particular region. And next like to restrict the areas in which industries are operating or having the processes which can harm the environment in this particular region also to carry out and uh, you know 
whatever investigations are needed and to do research relating to the problems of environmental pollution and which are having the implications uh, of air quality in that uh, region and preparation of manuals or guidelines, codes okay, related to the prevention, control and abutment of air pollution in this particular region. Well, then uh, you know only uh, a few days before draft notification of e-vehicles in NCR has been issued. Okay. So, this is basically for prioritization uh, which can include uh, early electrification of public transport as you know uh, government of India is giving uh, you know much uh, encouragement for e-vehicles so that we can have um, uh, zero emission kind of transport sector. Okay. So, uh, these feeder services or uh, you know transit related vehicles, large delivery fleet, vehicles owned by government. So, uh, they have to be in this particular uh, act and mandate, uh, the mandate of this particular notification is uh, related to certain percentage to uh, you know remove uh, those uh, petrol or uh, diesel driven vehicles, fossil fuel driven vehicles and to convert them into e-vehicles at a particular percentage and to for doing the enhancement of this percentage after certain period. So, long term plan is that we can have more and more e-vehicles basically. So, you can see here like this uh, particular uh, you know direction has been given to the transport department of government of NCT that adaptation of electric vehicles like in terms of two wheelers or four wheelers. So, within three months after this uh, you know act, this notification was passed. So, 10 percent of two wheelers have to be converted to uh, this e vehicles okay. and up to 31st March of 2023. So, uh, only within one year you can say it has to be increased up to 50 percent. Similarly, the four wheelers 5 percent in next three months and within one year uh, 25 percent. Okay. So, we can conclude that there are several legislations uh, over the years those legislations and regulations have been formulated and enacted by the government okay, for uh, effective management of the air quality and to ensure the sustainable growth of uh, industrial economy in our country and uh, to safeguard the occupational uh, related issues of the labor and people and also have safe environment in urban areas or uh, in suburban areas and now we talk about the entire country basically. <coughs> okay. So, there are several legislations have been enacted, but still we are having the problem. So, the basically it is not only important to have the legislations or regulations, but we should also go for their you know proper implementation. So, that is the key that uh, of course, we should have timely uh, the required legislations or acts or notifications related to air pollution control and mitigation, but also their enforcement should be proper and in an effective way, so that we can have the improved air quality and we can have a healthy life. So, thank you for your attention and these are the references, uh, you know we have taken much material for this presentation, you can go through uh, these uh, references in uh, leisure time. So, thanks again see you in the next lecture, thank you.